Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some emulation on the all new Red Magic 5G. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention that I have tested some of this stuff already, and this phone is an absolute beast when it comes to emulation. And going into this, I suspected it would be. I've already posted kind of an overview video testing out some native Android games and a few emulators. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, but I do want to give you a quick spec refresher. For the CPU, we have the all new Snapdragon 865. This variant here has 8 gigs of RAM, but they do make one up to 16, 128 gigabytes of onboard storage, a 6.65 inch AMOLED display at 144 hertz, and a built-in cooling system with a fan that can ramp up to 15,000 RPM. So we definitely have top of the line specs here, and the base price on this, the model that I have in my hand right now, is $550. When you compare that to, let's say, the new Galaxy S20 Ultra at $1,400, this does make a lot more sense. Now one new feature that they've added to the 5G that they didn't have on their older phones like the 3 or the 3S is HDMI over USB Type-C and yes it works really well, I will show it off in this video and most of the stuff that you're going to see tested in this video will be running over HDMI to my game capture just to make it a little easier. The controller I'm going to be using for all of these games you're about to see is an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. I will have the name of the emulator, the name of the console, if I'm upscale, and the name of the game on screen at any given time. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I showed a couple of these games running in my previous video, and this is going to handle Dreamcast no problem at all. We're at 2560 by 1920, and it's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it at full speed. Like I mentioned, the Red Magic 5G does support HDMI over USB Type-C, and I'm using this cheaper USB Type-C to HDMI adapter that I got on Amazon for about $14, and it works fine with the Red Magic 5G. Now, the only resolution I've been able to get out of this is 1080p at 60fps, but it still looks great, and I'm going to be using this for the rest of the games you're going to see in this video. I'm just going to connect this to my Elgato game capture to make it easier on myself. So the next thing I tested was N64 because every single time I do a video like this, everybody wants to see a little bit of N64 emulation running. This is GoldenEye 007 and we're upscaled to 1440 by 1080. This is going to handle N64 no problem at all. Moving up a bit to PSP using PPSSPP, I'm at 3x resolution with the Vulcan back end. This is Tekken 6, and I'm pretty sure with Tekken 6 I could have upped it to about 4x, but 3x still looks amazing. You win round two. Next on the list for PSP, we have God of War, Ghost of Sparta. We're still at 3x resolution with that Vulcan back end. I also tested Chains of Olympus. Now, this is running really great here for being at 3x on an Android device. But every once in a while, you will notice a dip with Ghost of Sparta and even Chains of Olympus. That's just how it goes with this game. But overall, performance is great here. We're getting a pretty steady 60. And finally, for PSP, this game's even harder to emulate than the God of War games. This is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, 3x resolution, Vulcan back end. We're getting a constant 30 here. Now, this game does switch between 30 and 60, so every once in a while you might notice it jump up to 60. But performance is awesome here. This is the best I've ever seen this game running on an Android device.
Next up, we have some Sega Saturn emulation using the Yobase and Shiro Core inside of RetroArch. This is Fighters Mega Mix, and no trouble here at all. Sega Saturn's gonna be totally playable on this device. So this is where the device really shines. This is the Dolphin emulator running some GameCube games. I was able to upscale the 720p and using the OpenGL backend for Soul Calibur 2 here, and we're getting a really good frame rate. Overall, GameCube games on this device run amazingly. I actually tested five for this video and one Wii game. I'm personally not a big Wii fan, but we got a lot of GameCube games here that run very nicely on the Red Magic 5G. Even some of the harder to emulate ones like Auto Modalista. For most of these games here, I did stick with OpenGL, but you'll see me switch to Vulcan by the end. There were a couple games that just worked a little better with Vulcan. So here's Mario Sunshine. I originally started this game with the Vulcan backend, but unfortunately the Vulcan backend just doesn't play nice with this one, at least on Android, so I did have to swap over to OpenGL, but we're getting full speed here. On the original GameCube, it ran at 30 FPS, and we're getting 30 FPS here. And finally, for the Dolphin emulator, we have a Wii game, still at 720p with the Vulcan back in. I also tested OpenGL with this one because when there's a lot of effects on screen, we do get some slowdown. And initially, I thought it came down to the shader cache, so I went back and tried this a few more times, getting everything cached out, and we're still getting a slowdown when there's a lot of effects. So I'm not a big fan of this emulator, and I know a lot of my viewers aren't either, but I always get asked about it, so I do throw it in my videos. This is Damon PS2 Pro. If we had a good PS2 emulator for Android, this phone might be able to run it pretty well. Now, Damon PS2 Pro is a paid app from the App Store. I don't recommend buying it, but I still wanted to test it out here. And I'm actually really surprised at how well Tekken 5 is running here. We're at 60 FPS, and the gameplay feels extra smooth. Now I did test a couple more games that weren't so successful, like Shadow of the Colossus and Gran Turismo 4, but I really didn't want to spend much time with this emulator in the video, so I got one more here, which is God of War 2. I just left it stock, and yes, of course, there are some hacks that you can throw on to get better performance, but you'll get a lot of frame skipping going on. But in the end, there's just not a really good PS2 emulator for Android yet.
So we're moving on to the final emulator I tested in this video, and that's Citra MMJ. This is a 3DS emulator. You can't get it from the App Store. I have done a video on how to set this up. But this is the best performance, hands down, that I've seen on any Android device using this emulator. I was able to go up to 2x resolution with all the games I tested, and I do believe that this phone does have enough power to run 3DS. It really comes down to emulator optimization, and this one has come a long way since it was released in 2019. Pokemon X and Y even run really well. Now I do want to show you that I'm still on the phone here. Just did a little drag down so you can see we're still on that Android device. This is pretty amazing seeing these 3DS games run so well on an Android device. Now with this one I do have to mute the sound because of the music in the background, but sound's working great. And finally, Super Smash at 2x resolution using Citra MMJ. Really nice performance, the best I've seen out of an Android device so far. So I'm really impressed with the emulation performance of the Red Magic 5G. That Snapdragon 865 does an amazing job. I also did a full test on the Galaxy S20 Ultra, but I gotta say, this one does come out ahead a bit. Now this has that built-in fan, so it can sustain the clock speeds a lot longer, and I didn't notice this thing getting hot at all when I was doing emulation, and it was plugged in through HDMI. So the cooling system they added to this phone is definitely doing a great job. Now there was another emulator I wanted to test in RetroArch called Flycast. I was going to do some Atomus Wave and Naomi emulation, but unfortunately it just kept crashing. I'm not sure if it's because of the Android version on the Red Magic 5G, but I got a good feeling it would handle those games really well, and I'll just have to wait for another update to the Core or RetroArch to test that out. But that's it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on the Red Magic 5G, be it native Android games, native Android apps, or emulation, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.